Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our event, My Life, My Business. Wish I was here. Today, I'll um, be speaking to you around checking in, actually, on whether or not you've been, first and foremost, making the changes you so desired when you set those goals uh, at the beginning of the year. And even to the extent that you, you, you felt that um, you needed to make New Year's resolutions because it was the new year and we've dealt with this in, in sort of various topics and um, in different ways and, and uh, Shanaz and I have been talking a, a lot around this. Um, and key to why we host this event is to remind you to be so engaged in your life that the journey of life, whether it's in your career or your business or in your personal life, is that you're fully present and that the journey is fully enjoyed. And so we've really covered a, a wide ranging areas um, from different perspectives for the principal objective for you to enjoy your life. Because in the end is you get off that, that wheel that describes your rat race and you working hard, furiously being busy, but not realizing that you're, quite, you're having a treadmill experience. You're going somewhere. In some cases, you, well, on the treadmill, you're going nowhere, but you're in motion. In some cases, you are going somewhere, but everything around you is landscape. It's a blur. You're not noticing uh, what's happening as you are journeying as you're making progress towards the goals that you've set. Or the things that were important today um, is not as important for you the next day. And it's, it's just being entirely reactive to the circumstances in your life. Now, all these things, you know, taken with a pinch of salt means that, yes, you have to take note of the things that are going well in your life, but also things that are not going well in your life. And it's a, it's a variety of, well, am I fighting fires? Or am I taking enough time to celebrate my achievements? Or is it never enough because you compare it with everybody else around you and see, well, they further ahead than what you thought. Or you actually achieve the goals and, and um, you realize that you're still feeling unfulfilled. Why is there still a hole? Why is there still a gap, a vacuum in which... <laughs> Does your life really matter, right? You, you, you look uh, successful, basically from the outside in, but you don't feel successful. And it's as if there's something just missing. Now that could be just, well, decisions made around um, living your values. And that could be questioned around, well, do you know what your values are? And how aligned are you to your values? Are they clear to you? And therefore, an authentic life is a life centered on making decisions that will fulfill your values. Now you could find that in certain cases, because values are influenced by your belief systems, right? Those kinds of principles that um, really forms part of not just nature, but also nurture, how you were brought up, um, the kinds of environment that you found yourself in at school, tertiary education, um, the communities uh, that you're in, that you've been exposed to, your friendship circle, um, your professional circle. Uh, what kind of experiences did you have in your first job? What kind of experiences do you have as an entrepreneur running a business or in a non-profit, in an organization? What has caused you pain and what has caused you pleasure? Under normal circumstances, and I say normal and, uh, with inverted commas, under normal circumstances, the things that cause you pleasure, you know, are the things where you feel, well, you know what, um, I'm happy doing this, right? And, and I could ask, well, can you define what happiness is? But you, you use the word, I'm, I'm happy doing this. I feel satisfied doing this. I'm fulfilled doing this. Or when I do a range of other things, I actually feel the pain of it, whether it's disappointment, physical pain, punishment. It shapes the kinds of things that have become that become important to pursue and the things that become important to avoid. And so, to a large extent, these shape um, what we would call means values, these surface values that serve the purpose of meeting some deeper underlying set of core values. And um, therefore, you know, the intensity with which you live your life, right? Number one uh, starts from 
Are you aware of your value system? Are you, are you aware of making decisions that align with your value system, that you satisfy them? Or are you living a life of compromise? And therefore, um, you can't truly enjoy your achievements. But really this afternoon, I, uh, what I prepared to talk about was being totally engaged in your life. Not just with your family, but also at work, in your career, in all your activities. I mean, is it such... Is idealism to even want to experience the pleasure of your life. Waking up in the morning, being energized because you're on a mission. You know what your life is about. Is you have a purpose. Now, you know, we've, we've, we've had several conversations around purpose. And if you can go and check on our channel, it's called the Mufasa Coaching Practice channel on YouTube, you can find some of the videos there. Um, some of the even shortcasts that we publish. So, um... In short, what is total engagement? Now, for some of us, you know, it could be just totally intuitive. We know we engage because a couple of things happen. We're so immersed in what we are doing. We're looking forward to what we are doing every day. And we now know we're totally engaged in our lives. But for those of us a little bit more analytical, is uh, is not intuitive. I mean, how do you assess whether you engage in your life? And is a few components. Now, this is not exhaustive, but it's just a way of thinking about it, right? It's thinking about, well, getting up in the morning and um, facing your day and being active in your day. How willing are you to start your day in the morning? Is it a question of, well, I have responsibilities and I have to get up? Because that have to means I'm forced to. If I don't, there are consequences. Or at least you, you see the benefits of, of getting up and being productive, right? You've sold it to yourself. You see the need. Um, at the other end of the spectrum is that you really want to get up and face your day and carry out your activities at a very sort of basic level, at the start of your day, just to explain the point in terms of the engagement uh, principle. And, and, and so together with this, if you are willing to get up, and here yeah, we want the willingness to be on a I want to get up scale in terms of the range of engagement. I want to. I choose to, I exercise my option of choice to get engaged with my day. So that's what you do, right? Associated with this I want to principle, I freely choose to principle is a, is a level of excitement, is a level of enthusiasm, the desire to face your day, to get going in your day, right? Do you, do you feel that? Is this something that you experience? Now you would say, well, you know what? We can't always like what we do. But I mean, if you know your, your life matters and it has meaning and you are leaving an impact on the world through what you are doing, then why wouldn't you want to be excited that you are contributing to the world? Or are you spending your days warding off disaster? Is, is, is that how... You approach your day expecting disaster to happen around every corner. So your life and the success of your life is based on avoiding risks or mitigating risk as much as possible. And therefore, you're not enthusiastic about the mitigation of risk because you, you forecast disaster and you want to avoid disaster and minimize disaster as much as you can. So we can understand why your level of enthusiasm will be too high, right? Because it comes back to the values that I spoke about in terms of um, pleasure-seeking or pain-avoiding. So you choose. I would say this pleasure-seeking. You'll be excited. You'll be enthusiastic about what's going to lie ahead. Having a sense of adventure, not quite knowing how the day is going to turn out, but you're looking forward to the day with the things that, happens as ex uh, that happen as expected and all of the things that don't, you know, the curveballs. But being prepared and knocking that curveball out of the park as it comes. Also being prepared to do so. And also being prepared to swing and miss. <laughs> and having some fun while doing so. But the one thing that really matters is that, yes, you could be willing. I mean, on the one-two scale, right? And you could be enthusiastic about your day. Really looking forward to it. But there's this readiness principle. Are you ready? And I want to talk about this readiness today. To really jump out of bed dress yourself in the, in the way you want for success and tackle each task with a ferocity and celebrating every single accomplishment in your day, right? 
appreciating the things that you do, but also appreciating the things that you do with others, right? Because that's the secret ingredient to enjoying what you, it's your accomplishment. But normally it's, it's the kinds of things that you do with others that you respect, that you enjoy traveling with on this journey that we call life. So readiness. Now, in, in many cases, coming back to the, the whole aspect of setting goals for the year, wanting, wanting um, something different or aspiring to something, wanting to achieve um, in an area of uh, academic qualifications, um, in area of uh, career progression, starting that particular hobby, um, meeting new people, dating new people, um, travel, all these kinds of things. You set the goal at the beginning of the year. It's the same thing. You know, uh, you set the goals because I can say you were pretty willing. This is goals that you wanted to achieve, right? In the beginning. And you were fairly enthusiastic, right? Because, you know, but that enthusiasm is now waned a bit and, and you still haven't done anything. And then therefore, we talk about this readiness. So what are the, the different components that would um, influence this readiness type principle? Well, what you, you do a check-in, right? So, so this is the, the key thing, is when you reflect back on the year and the things that you said you wanted to do, and this even works in reason for getting out of bed, right? Is, and it's a little formula that we use as a guide, is challenging status quo right now you would only challenge status quo if you become dissatisfied with status quo if if status quo the present circumstances in other other words the present reality is not serving your purposes any longer i mean i can only imagine that when you start the year and you say well i want i want to achieve this particular thing and you set the goals and whether they life goals career goals business goals organizational goals travel gold, doesn't really matter. It's because you want to change something in your environment, broaden. When you want to broaden your horizon, you are changing your comfort zone, your area of familiarity, right? You're no longer satisfied with um, what is. You're no longer satisfied with your life as it is. We're not talking about contentment. We're now talking about areas of growth, right? You want a new experience. Uh, if you've got health goals, well, clearly you're not satisfied with a range of things. Either um, if you have high blood pressure symptoms, high cholesterol, you want to lower all these things. There are certain things you need to do. Either um, going to see uh, a physician to prescribe a plan for you, right? To first of all measure it, prescribe a plan, you adopt that, and then you couple this with exercise and all and the healthy eating plan and so forth. But the key is, if you're not dissatisfied, for, for example, if, if you know, um, you know, I, I, I think I, I, um, I could lose, I could lose some weight, right? Because your friends around you have been saying, well, okay, you know, um, it's something you ought to look into because it really centers on your general health and well-being. Um, and unless when you get on that scale, you are unhappy with <laughs> what it tells you, right? If you do the research and you understand what your goal weight should be for your height and, uh, and so forth, and your bone structure and and so on, and you, and you realize what that needs to be, unless you are dissatisfied with your current weight, you're not going to do anything. You're not ready right, to implement uh, a plan of action. You're not, you're absolutely not ready because you, status quo is still too pleasurable. The do nothing kicks in in this area because you're embracing it, right? You're not ready, therefore, for the next step, right? Because you happy with where you are. So why change anything? So the familiarity, even in the sense with this example, right, is, is every now and again you wistful, right? Either when you go purchase, when you go clothes shopping and you find that some things aren't fitting as they should any longer, 
and you just go and you whistle and then, you know, you, you do all kinds of things that accommodate that. So, you know, your budget is going up and, and, and to some extent you should be unhappy about having to spend more money on clothes um, to shape your, your newest body shape, but you're not. You're absorbing it because the pleasure of maintaining status quo is higher than the pain of maintaining status quo. So, you do nothing. Now, in order to shift that, it is having a very clear picture of what an alternative could look like. So, when it comes to, yes, you want to lose weight. So, in what, how would you do this in this area? Well, you know what? It's not a question of listening to those around you and taking their advice and how they see you. It's what you see when you're looking in the mirror. What, what do you see? What would you like to see? Number one. Or what size jeans would you like to fit into, for example? And, and if you decide, well, you know what? I want to wear the latest uh, suit or dress or jean or whatever that might be in its three sizes smaller than we are at and you set that vision and by the way that vision becomes a true desire and you start to think about it and it's clear that if you get there you begin to imagine the benefits of doing so how you would feel about yourself if you can just fit into the favorite pair of jeans or in the latest style or the trendy jeans that you can't necessarily find for your body type but if you imagine right that um, dropping in several sizes to wear that desirable piece of clothing and that's what you can think about right will begin to influence your status quo it is now an internal being where you want to change it because you can see that the picture that when you do so, when you do change it, when you do drop the weight and you can get into that gene, what sense of satisfaction? So you begin to think about the pleasure of making the kinds of changes. And so the pleasure of the future state now exceeds the pleasure of staying with the status quo. In actual fact, you now realize there's pain associated with status quo and the pleasure of the future states now is far more greater. It completely outweighs status quo. See, you could now develop this picture. Now you can really, you, you, can, you can taste it, you can sense it um, because you can visualize it, you can feel it. And once you get to that point, now you're, you're actually ready to say, okay, I want to move, I want to change, I want to change, not P I ought to change, and yeah, I need to change, no, I want to change, I want to change where I'm at. So you shift into this place, and it's, 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 now you even know what you want to change into, what you want to change, and it's highly desirable, this future positive expectation of the change. Now you work on, okay, how am I going to get there? What are the things that I need to be doing to get to that point? What are the different ways that I will embark on to get there? So, two strategies normally is an eating plan and exercise. So, two strategies, eating plan, right. What does that actually look like? as far as an action plans, as far as what the next step should be, all right? And because you are willing, you are enthusiastic about this new picture that you want to uh, pursue, you begin to identify the things that you need. And for example, a healthy ET plan, we'll go see a nutritionist. We'll do research on the internet. Ask ChatGPT if you like or any AI tool that's available to come up with a plan for you. So, with the next steps, and that because your dissatisfaction is so high with status quo, and that you absolutely want to achieve this future 
that you are envisioning, you are going to take those steps as far as your eating plan is concerned. And the same would go for starting with an exercise routine. Right? So the plan is absolutely laid. But it's not just good enough. Those components are central to build momentum, to take the steps towards achieving the change that you want to see. But you have to be wise to realize that you might have barriers in place. Or what are those barriers? Some things are external. What, what, what are the things that stand in your way? Identify them so that your plan addresses them. Eliminate them. Overcome them. Seek advice, whether it's consulting advice, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a coach to help you overcome those barriers to success now. Right? Understand what those external things are. And then, of course, you, you need to realize that um, on a greater scale, your internal barriers to success. Once again, you might have perceptions. You might have belief systems, you might be, which are limiting you in some way, shape, or form. You might have had, um, uh, be, you might believe what, uh, society says about somebody with your particular disposition, your shape, when it comes to exercising and so on and so on. And um, therefore, you know, you might not succeed. It's not possible to succeed. Believing what society would say, believing what the internet would say, social media would say, as far as that's concerned. But the question is, is it really true? Is it factual? Well, don't let it stop you. Uh, but be aware it exists. What will you do to rather test that?